number of very silly things you can do these days in modern. Yeah, I've been waiting. I just I'm just waiting for Leon and Guildpack starting to play and in turn two sign a Draco. Like I that's what I signed up for 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 this tournament. And until I mm -hmm. see it, I will just not be satiated. All right. Well, you'll have to stay uh, in uh, un unsatiated, insage, insatiated. Yeah. For at least one more game, my friend, because it looks like we've got a pretty regular turn one start here. Yeah. Misty Rainforest goes and fetches a triome, while on Devon's side of things, that's a delighted halfling. So back over to Mac. We'll see if he has a way to answer this uh, this delighted halfling. Something like fire would be really, really good here. And with the shock from the Temple Garden. Yeah, we're certainly either firing or scion here for sure. Oh, it's the scion just straight up. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah, because he, he he got the, the Xander's uh, pa Xander, uh, lounge. Xander's lounge, yeah. So yeah. He, he got the turn two Wooberg going on. So does that satiate you at least a little bit? I mean, like, we take those. Like, I'm not going to sit here and be upset about a turn two sign of Draco. But, like, mm -hmm. you know, like, it could be attacking. You, maybe. you, you do want to see that ley line. I get yeah. it. I get it. Yeah. You're just going to put this card in your deck and not have it in your opening hand? Come on, man. Come on, man. All right. On the other side of things, now, Agatha's Col sold, Agatha's sold Cauldron. Yep, perfect. Words are my tool. And then a Culney Garden as well to make a plant. But the sign's going to get in there. Yeah, it looks like he's even just opting for a little bit of extra damage here and just casting the Violent Outburst now, which I like a lot. Um, mm -hmm. Mac really, you know, realizing what his role is in this matchup, just to try to get the game over as quickly as possible. All right, Sion comes in for five and will uh, also bring with it two Rhinos. There they are. Devin's hand is looking super unimpressive. I think I see it. Uh, might and like not too much else going on. Wait, what is this card? It's a grist, the hunger tide. Is it foil or something? I don't remember. Uh, that was the old, there, there were some cards that were printed in like with like the art process or like the sketch version or something uh, like that. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I think that's uh, that's what it is. Yeah, man, all these new cool arts. Like, I like what about me? Like, how am I supposed to tell what stuff is? Oh yeah, the 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 job of the uh, the the magic caster has become a, so much more difficult in recent times. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Mac now still in a position to attack for eight, even after one of those uh, those rhinos is dealt with. He said, "I faces the place." Mac is yeah. not messing around here at all. Get it. And upstairs for Grist generates a little bug, a little insect. And one of those rhinos, of course, killed by the uh, by the Grist's minus two ability. Yeah, the Grist. Exactly what Devin needed here. I am not sure if it'll be enough. I mean. If he has something like a cord here, which you know, you know, doing nothing with three mana and all these creatures up looks a little bit cordy to me. This game is definitely still within reach, um, but the pressure from this scion is uh, like huge. It's really, really hard for Devin to deal with. All right. Well, let's see what uh, see what he can do about it here. And they come. He said, "Oh, how about Paseju?" Ooh, I love this Besaju upkeep too, because he, Mac uh, got the Surveil Land end of turn and chose to keep on top. So Devin is like, no, you can't have that card that you wanted. Yeah, nice. Heads up play. He's like, well, how about I get another Surveil Land then? <laughs> I'm going to Surveil. Do you <laughs> like it or not, man? I'm going to Surveil. Let's have a look. And that one is also going to stay on top. Okay. So Besaju kills the Draco, which is then exiled by the uh, Agatha Soul Cauldron. But in response, fire and ice, kill the bug. And now Mac draws the card that he's surveilled to the top, and we are in his main face. So what did he do with the other damage from the fire? He didn't kill the plant, he went upstairs, or...? 
Uh, yeah, unsure about that. There was because only one damage was required. The plants Ooh. are zero two, or zero one two. Oh, sorry, you put a counter on the plant, so it probably just went uh, uh, upstairs, to... I guess. Yeah. yeah, you don't want to take a loyalty off the grist, I guess. If you if you're really trying to push damage through, Devon down to four doesn't block. Yeah, I mean he it, he knows his plan. Creatures sideways, your face. I respect it. Yep, just swing and swing until twenty damage is done. Oh, the, the oh, this is before damage. Oh, Okay. I mean, this makes a little bit more sense to me why he's just been so aggressively going after Devin's life total mm -hmm. and kind of just ignoring this Grist. Like, I figured the Grist would maybe be a potential problem card as the game went on, but it just seems like Mac had way more action than I even expected. Yeah, 1-1s one are just so anemic against the, uh, the, the trampling Rhinos, right? Like, you can't rely on just putting a bunch of 1-1s one on the battlefield to gum up the board because the Rhinos will just trample over them. Totally. So now Devon on three life. Mac on a much more, much healthier 13 here. With three lethal rhinos. Right. Four mana, Yorg Moth. And Devon's going to have to pick something very special apart here. Kills one of the rhinos. Exiles the Gris to put a counter on the plant. So I think it has two counters on it now, right? Ooh, this is a, such a hot play. All right, hit it. What's happening here? Well, he he used the Soul Cauldron to exile uh, the Grist. Mm. Um, so, and then both of his creatures had plus and plus encounters on them because he the plant already had a counter on it, and then he used the the Soul Cauldron to put yeah. a counter on on the Yakmoth. So then he used both of <laughs> the the creatures to to use Grist a plus one ability to to make those two. Right, because they have the even though they're not planeswalkers, they still have the loyalty have abilities. abilities. He activated exactly. the loyalty ability of the Gris because it's a creature when it was exiled. Oh my goodness! Wow, yeah, really? Two hundred really. IQ plays here from Devon. Yeah, tight plays. But is it sure. going to be enough? Because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what your IQ is if you're having your uh, your head kicked in by two eight eight or oh, two four four rhinos. And uh, yeah, Devon says, "All right, enough's enough." A very impressive play, a very very fancy play indeed, but not one that was enough to secure a dub for him in uh, in game number one. So these players will hit their sideboards and we'll come back to game number two and see how things go. But a textbook match there, for, or textbook game, I should say, from the uh, the Rhinos player, uh, Noah, in the sense that, you know, just putting on pressure, making sure that the opponent was sort of on the back foot a little bit with uh, with, with well-placed disruption, not, a, not able to enact their game plan, uh, while you're, yeah, again, smashing the faith they're, they're, they're facing. Yeah, exactly. I mean, just going exactly, you know, to the plans of, of the Rhino deck, Mac doing what he's been doing seemingly all day at 8 no, you know, just sending these Rhinos sideways, killing everyone with Cyan Draco. Really clean, decisive win, making his deck look, look really well positioned. All right, well, let's see if it can be done again here in game number two. We're going to head back down as soon as everything's in readiness for our second game and see... If, uh, if things change a little bit for the uh, Golgari Yorgmoth play, we saw how the, the power of this deck, how it can uh, how it can stitch together a win out of seemingly thin air if the uh, if the cards line up correctly. But they certainly didn't in game number one. So let's see if things change here in game number two. Out of the sideboard here for the Rhinos player, Mystical Dispute, Force of Vigor, Dranath Magistrate, Tishana's Tidebinder, Dismember, Versaju, Subtlety. Um, what are the cards you like there out of the board? Maybe the Dismember, take care of key... Key creatures, subtlety maybe to, to keep your moths off the board, something like that. Yeah, you got it. That sounds exactly right to me. Dismember is looking good, subtlety looking good. Tidebinder, another nice one being able to, you know, just shut off a Yogmoth completely. Uh, I'm, I would be surprised if all those didn't come in. We've got some some uh, rippers on the other side of the battlefield as well for uh, Devin Straub. He's got access to Chalice of the Void and Legion's End, both cards very useful in this matchup. Um, apart from that, we've got. What else have we got? Solus Jailer, Pick Your Poison, Force of Vigor, Reclamation Sage, Fulminator Mage, Necroplasm, Endurance, Fatal Push, Assassin's Trophy. Fatal Push is a nice one as well. Yeah, the Fatal Push, maybe the Assassin's Trophy, just kind of slow down the the onslaught of, of the bigger creatures a little bit. Um, like you said, Legion's End, definitely for this matchup, been a really good one, and, and definitely those Chalices. Pick Your Poison, nice new card. Uh, not exactly the best matchup for it here. Uh, it Notably, you know, against max list 
in specific, being able to m- make him sacrifice a creature with flying, that that does give a little bit more value to this pick your poison. Still, probably not enough to warrant bringing it in. There's not too ma- like there's not too many enchantments that you can really deal with. I guess Leyland Binding in the list as well might actually push it over the top, though. Thinking about now, thinking about it a, a little bit more, it being a, a one mana card that answers so many different things, it, it could actually be okay. It's flexible for sure. It's certainly flexible and it's cheap, so uh, it's got a few things to recommend to it. To re- recommend to it, but here now we see the Shardless Agent Cascade trigger presumably into the Rhinos here. Unless uh, Mac has had a brain fart and taken them out. Nope, there it is. Uh-huh. Crashing footfalls to make two rhinos. And Devon, with a decent start, uh, the delighted halfling into the Agatha Soul Cauldron. Now, once again, facing 10 power. 10 power with the classic turn three cascade play from the rhinos player. Yes, yeah, so scary how little it takes, you know, for these rhinos decks to just amass a crazy board. Hmm. Yeah, and then you deal with it and they can just do it again. But now, look at this. Speaking of crazy boards, Yorgmoth ran physician here for Devon. It's exactly what he wants to play. So both players kind of uh, hitting their marks here, playing their key cards, and we'll see who's, uh, whose game plan ends up being the superior one. That is a Dryad Arbor. Do not be fooled. It's not a forest. Well, it is a forest. But it's a dryad arbor, also. It yeah, it is a forest, but also it's not just a forest. It's not only a forest. It's deeper than that. And it is immediately sacrificed to the Yorgmoth in order to put a minus one, minus one counter on the rhino. Oh. And even taking these rhinos down to size, we've seen how devastating the proliferate ability can be with the the one one counters being spread out like this. But more importantly, now the Yorgmoth can block them. I guess he just wanted to make sure to get the counters on now before Mac could could have a possible answer for this Yagmoth. Mm-hmm. I was a little surprised why he did it all all main phase. I guess also getting a couple different options in his graveyard for this Agatha Soul Cauldron to use at instant speed. So, I mean, nonetheless, it was a seemingly decent turn. So, all right, in they come. Now Devon has to decide whether to block, risk the Yorg Moth dying to a fire ice. He's going to. He's going to. No, maybe not. It's I honestly... can here. On, on 17, I don't know if you I don't know if it's worth risking your key creature here to save save a couple of life points. It's a tough decision. The, what I like about the block is that he can put a counter on the Yorg Moth, see if Mac has any responses. Um, and then he could also sacrifice the plant to really play around like any any sort of two damage uh, answers. Oh, so, so right, because with the counter on the Yorgmoth and a minus one minus an extra minus one minus one counter. Okay, I see. But instead, oh my goodness, it's Tishana's Tidebinder turning up once again here. So I think this one is targeting the Agatha Soul Cauldron, which is pretty nice. But we will see the plant sacrificed, so the Rhino dies. The Agatha Soul Cauldron does nothing. Now it is just a blank piece of, uh, of cardboard. Hopefully Devin drew a card off of that. I don't know if he drew from the... From the sacrificing the plant. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I don't know. You'd hope that he'd, uh, he wouldn't be missing stuff like that. It happens. He's, he's thinking about dinner. He, he's got steaks in his eyes. Oh, yeah. What time is it over in Denver, actually? It's like... 2 p.m. where I am, so I imagine it's pretty late where, where they are. Where is it? Yeah, Denver, like, about 8, 8.50 p.m., uh, oh, that's, give or that's take. Dinner time, that's dinner time for sure, mate. Oh, that's dinner time for sure. Yeah, not only is it dinner time, like, they have been playing just grueling matches of magic all day. Like, to make all it to, you know, yeah. in, in, in one of these tournaments is so difficult. Like, yeah. Oh, so Devin, Devin's in for the fight of his life, not against Mac Andres, but about, you mm-hmm. know, he, he's got to fight off the thoughts of, you know, B-dubs for dinner. Yeah, the tummy rumbles. They're coming That's in it, quick. Mate. The greatest foe of all. Yeah. You know, he's, in his mind, he's thinking, oh, I can Google where the nearest Popeyes is. Oh, yeah. yeah. 
Popeyes. You already know. He's like, oh, I just go any anywhere is good. Like I, I just want to get home, get some rest in. Yeah. Come back re- refreshed and restored for his uh for his day two campaign. Totally. All right. Devin here. The Agatha Soul Cauldron still under the effect of the Tushana's Tide Binder. It has been Tide Bonded, Tide Bound, and uh, now Yorgmoth able to uh, to do what he does best. But with four mana available and I think a nice full grip, I think that's full five cards in hand here for Devon. Four now. Plays a Grist. Yeah, I mean, Grist's great here. Just being able to make some one ones. The cauldron Makes turned sense. off, so he can't exactly do you know set up the same cool combo with Gris Cauldron this game uh, yet. But yeah, you know he can start trying to answer this uh, Agatha Soul Cauldron, and then eventually get that going. Or sorry, this uh, Tide Binder, which is shutting off his Soul Cauldron. Yeah, I think killing the Tide Binder here is a uh, a pretty important priority in order to make sure that the uh, the Agatha Soul Cauldron can do its its best work. And is that a is that a proliferate there? Yeah. Okay. Nice as well to have that uh, the Grist out picks up an extra loyalty counter, and this will unlock the Agatha Soul Cauldron, and mean that uh, Yorgmoth could potentially be used as uh, as a Grist as well. Yeah, and also you put a counter on this Yorgmoth, make it even harder for Mac to possibly find an answer. Mm-hmm. Really big turn there for Devin, honestly. Like just this board state of of seemingly not too many things going on is so much pressure all right activates the dryad arbor so yorgmoth now does have a uh, a plus one plus one counter is there a grist in the bin i thought there was a grist in the bin i no don't okay never mind. No, never mind i thought it was going to turn uh, yorgmoth into a planeswalker but no there's no grist in the uh that would be sweet oh yeah start churning out one ones to sacrifice to the yorgmoth oh baby yeah i mean that's an absolutely disgusting combo honestly It looks like that's his plan, honestly. He just ultimate this Grist, yeah. uh, use the Cauldron, start getting it going. Yep. And that's exactly what we're going to see happen. The Grist minus five. Uh, opponent loses life equal to the number of creatures in your graveyard. Uh, but that's not why he's doing it. He's doing it so he can uh, start activating the now loyalty ability of Yorgmoth and uh, start uh, spewing out those bugs. All right, we've got the uh, suspended copy of Crashing footfalls down to just one counter. Ooh, and that's the necroplasm I see in his graveyard. I think this is exactly the sort of matchup that necroplasm is for. Being able to dredge it and then have it as a way to continuously kill zero cost creatures. Like you can just blow up rhinos every turn with it. So necroplasm says at the beginning of your end step, destroy each creature with converted mana cost equal to the number of plus one plus one counters on necroplasm. Uh, and at the beginning of your upkeep, put a plus one plus one counter on Necroplasm. So if you can keep it as a, as a one one without any counters on it, yeah, it just cleans up those rhinos. And that's what Devin might be doing next turn. He will lose um, his bugs as well. He he will lose his insects, but uh, well worth it, obviously, when you when you're keeping rhinos at bay. Totally. Or at least you know having the option for the Necroplasm is it seems really powerful. All right, delighted halfling. And of course, the Necroplasm also has Dredge, which means that it can uh, come back to the hand, fill up the bin a little bit more. Nice inclusion. Especially with Grist, as you can mill over your Dredge card. Yeah, not a card you see too often. Um, well, I think the original printing was Ravnica, I want to say. Yeah. yeah. Um, so. At, at least the first Ravnica block. Yeah. Yes, like like the like Ravnica. <laughs> Because Dredge was the old, the first ever Golgari mechanic. One yep. of the more broken ones. A little bit more, yeah. a little bit better than something like Scavenge. I've seen worse mechanics than Dredge for sure. I mean, certainly, certainly. All right, a bug goes away. A counter on the other Rhino, and we might just see some proliferation to get rid of these oh, Rhinos. Yeah, Never, ne- don't even need the Necroplasm. Maybe yeah, draws a no. card, doesn't Dredge. So discard. And look at this as well. Yeah, this is this is not a the, the proliferate just in full swing here. Four plus one plus one counters on the Yorgmoth, three on that insect. And they both neither have loyalty. Of them, neither of them had their loyalty act, uh, activated <laughs> yet uh, either. 
So we'll we'll get to a point in this game as well where the Yorgmoth and or the Bug can be uh, can have their minus fives activated, and that doesn't kill them. Unlike a Planeswalker, usually you know when you ultimate them, um, often it'll it'll send them to the bin. But here, no such uh, no such restriction. Oh, they just got loyalty from fun. On. Yeah, sticking around. Wait, that that he might be able to just win the game here just like discard some cards proliferate a couple times if he has enough if, like he just needs yes. eight creatures in the graveyard to have Take lethal in right and discard two cards yeah yeah that we don't know exactly what the creature count is Devin might be counting it up right now but he, he has... even dredge like he could like maybe do like a draw step like like if he has like any creature he could like sack it do a draw yeah. step dredge two maybe hit one more creature discard it for the proliferate Oh man! Yeah, true, true, true. Because yeah, it's... once it's been once it's in the bin, it will count. All right, hey, why am I? And uh, the Agatha's Soul Cauldron is going to be activated to exile a creature from. Yeah, so this is to put another another counter on here and, and yeah, a, so a loyalty can, counter, make extra bugs. Yep. Yeah. Oh yeah, the creature. Yep. I think another I think he's creature. Doing this that. is it, man. Devin's seen the line, dude. Devin has yeah. the line and is just trying to make sure he has enough creatures in his bin in order to do this. That is actually so sick. I have not seen uh, this this happen while watching Yagmoth before. So, sacrifices the bug in order to put a minus one, minus one counter on the rhino. I imagine we're going to see another... Oh, sorry, the, the haywire might. I, I think we're going to see another sacrifice with the other insect here as well. But you can see, Devin isn't activating the ability, the, the loyalty abilities of the Yorgmoth or the Insect to the to his left because I think he wants to double ultimate. And even if not, right, he's just he's just shrinking all of these rhinos. Oh, he wants it. I can like I can feel how much Devin wants this. Yeah, he wants, the math, he wants the style points, dude. Exactly. The math he's doing right now yeah, here it is, comes. is creatures in graveyard math and proliferate math. Yep. Yep. And so now minus one, minus one counters put everywhere. Extra uh, loyalty counters, plus one, plus one counters put on the Yorgmoth and the Insect, another proliferate. Both of them go up now to to above ultimate levels. Oh, I think it's yeah. six and five loyalty. Devin does a quick count of the creatures in his bin, and he's going to win with a double Grist ultimate with no Grists wow. on the battlefield. That oh, wow. is one of the most remarkable victories I have seen in the game of Magic for a very long time. <laughs> well done Dude. to Devin. One of the most stylish victories I think we're going to see today. Noah, how was that, mate? Oh like, my goodness. what? That was insane. I just think that, like, it is so cool, just the specific wording on Agatha's Soul Cauldron and the specific wording on Grist, that what just we just witnessed is even possible. Like, that, wow. I'll have to say yeah, it's wow, that honestly. Was, that was incredible. Because normally, if you win with a plane, like, winning with a Planeswalker Ultimate isn't yeah. uncommon. But yeah, normally it involves having the Planeswalker in play. And normally <laughs> you don't win with two identical ultimates strung back to back with, <laughs> with each other. Yeah. So Devin uh, showing us exactly what uh, what he's capable of here. We're going to jump into game number three, Noah, as well crazy. now. Uh, but we can continue to talk about what we've just seen as we head into our deciding game. Devin taking the chance to uh, fuel up quickly. You can oh. see they're having a munch in the front <laughs> and something. I just love that. I just like soul read how hungry Devin was that he couldn't even wait for dinner. Even wait, dude. He he's just like, I'm down. Popeyes delivered to the venue. <laughs> yeah, That's exactly. It. He's yeah. like, yep, dinner's now. All right. Chalice on one. Great start. Oh, sorry, Chalice on zero, I should say. Great start for Devin here. That's going to uh, make it difficult for, for Mac to get these rhinos into play. Just crunching. The lay, is that a ley line binding that's in the bin? Oh, it's surveilled, surveilled. I was wondering how it got there. Yeah. All right, surveilled with the uh, with the new lands that have uh, uh, joined uh, the format recently. And so, what's Max' plan for this uh, chalice? He's got beside you. He's got force of vigor. And I think that is about it. Leyline binding also will do it, but uh, does need to find these cards. He's got he, he does, he's got plenty of answers. He just needs to find it. And he certainly brings Force of Vigor in in this matchup, just because of, like Agatha Soul Cauldron. You know, mm -hmm. there, there's a lot of applications for it. So this is just a good matchup for him to have Force of Vigor in his deck, anyways. Mm -hmm. So that's good. Um, but yeah, like as you said, Leyline binding already one in the bin, but there is three more of those. And you know, his list, it being a little less typical. You know, like having access to these scions and stuff, it's not 
as though the chalice is like not a really big problem for him. He just has other ways to possibly push through and, and, and still yeah. create a good game plan for himself. So yeah, the the sign of Draco is is it's pretty good against Chalice of the Void, I would say. I'd say it's a pretty good card against uh, against Chalice. Yeah, it can rock. It can rock for sure. I've seen some beefy chalices, dude. I've seen a chalice for six uh before. I've seen I've Ooh. seen some real, real chonkers. Are you trying to flex on us now? Before. Chalice for six? Like who needs that? Um, what was it in? It was uh, it was to counter it was against Scapeshift to counter Primeval Titans, I believe. Ooh. Way, way back in the day. Way, way, Ooh. way back in the day. I mean that that does sound a little spicy, I'm not gonna lie. It was it was real spicy, yeah. Uh, if I if I remember correctly, it was a Tron list and it was it had it on like two to stop all of the ramp spells and then six to stop the uh the the primeval no it must have been on four as well for this i can't remember anyway it was it was it was brutal uh but uh, i don't think we're going to see one on 12. anyway we have Agatha the soul cauldron dryad arbor and a leyline binding to get rid of the Agatha the soul cauldron interestingly yeah not, that's not a, the palace that's some respect Huh. Interesting play. You know, I would have expected like some, you know, end of turn, Leyland's binding your chalice, get in there for four, maybe make a couple of rhinos. But I maybe Max hand like didn't have, you know, any sort of rhino. Ability. Well he obviously doesn't have any cascade cards. Oh, maybe he does, but he's not playing them. Yeah. Um but he doesn't <laughs> have uh, he, he's obviously suspending one of the the rhino cards so all right dismember's a really nice one here really really nice one to get rid of that shelter before it can do any real harm and the song gets in again devon down to six holy moly this has been a quick one yeah i think just the combination of devon's mana base being so painful uh -huh. and then just the the turn three scion just basically n not really having any too many clean answers in Devin's deck for 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 the sign this early. So, all right, Agatha Soul Cauldron joins the party here. What did he deploy after? I, I don't know if I recognize the art. No, I'm not. I'm not one hundred percent sure either. Uh, is it a is it a reclamation sage? Looks like it didn't matter. Didn't matter. It <laughs> doesn't matter. We'll never yeah. know because that is that, my friends. It looks like Mac Andrus is going to take out game number three.